What is the cloud? Let's go back in time for a minute and remember how we used to use computers to understand what brought about the need to have the cloud as we have it today. So a long time ago, back when the computer was big enough to use as foundations in house building, we used computers for pretty basic tasks. We used to make documents, play games, use applications, and all the data generated was stored within that computer. As time went on, the need for data propagation came about. So that document that you had on your computer now needs to be sent to other computers for other people. Lo and behold, the client server architecture came into being. Let's look at an example to get a better idea of what we're talking about when we say client server architecture. So say that you have a business running multiple stores, your business sells some product X, for example. Now the original store would know the prices and could just share those with everybody else, but that would be super costly, ineffective, and prone to errors or mistakes. It would also not be easily updatable in real time, which would lead to stores selling products more expensive or cheaper than they should be. Instead, we would put the catalog of your business on a server and all the stores would then access the server for all product information like catalog, price, inventory, etc. Now every store has the accurate and updated product catalog and now the problems we discussed previously are effectively solved. The way things were done in the past was that a number of clients simply communicated with the server and the server provided them with what they needed. Now things are different. Now, instead of a server, it's a cloud that is catering to their requirements. Furthermore, some more value-added services and features are provided by many cloud providers. You may be using the cloud now. Take a look at these services. Gmail, Yahoo, Google Drive, Office 365, and Dropbox. These are all cloud services. All these applications are stored remotely and provide you with the user interface to interact with them. There are a few things that make up a cloud application and they can be explained on a high level as follows. The first component of a cloud application is the compute. This is the brains of the operation and handles all the requests that you have of the application. The compute contains a processor and memory, which in compute terms are a CPU and RAM. The processor processes the instructions and the RAM is the temporary high frequency memory used to hold the instructions as they are fed to the processor. Then comes storage. This is where the data and your application are saved. Think of this as the hard drive on your computer. It holds information the same way the hard drive on your computer holds information for your applications and other such information. Then comes the database. The database also stores information, kind of like storage. But the difference between plain old storage and a database is that the database stores the information in a structured way. The reason for doing this is so that the information is easily queryable and can be traversed and retrieved quickly and easily without requiring too much compute resources to find the information we need. Last comes the network. The network is responsible for con connecting your application on the cloud to the internet and for making sure that you have access to that application via the internet. Looking back to the first hypothetical of the shops with the servers to hold the product catalog, what do you think happens if the server gets too full up or if too many branches of your business open up and that one server can't handle the load? Well, you would go and get more servers, right? Though that is actually how you would go about fixing that problem. It introduces a new problem into the mix known as server sprawl. Server sprawl is the problem a lot of companies experienced when their requirements from their servers suddenly inflated and they got more servers to cater to those requirements. But then when those requirements deflated quickly, those companies were left with an excess of underutilized servers that were needlessly taking up space and resources in their maintenance and upkeep. Basically, the workload did not justify their existence and the companies were basically losing money by having them around and running. This was a major reason behind the shift to cloud computing. There were a lot of business challenges besides server sprawl that led to the requirement and usage of the cloud in today's world. The cloud is significantly cheaper when you compare it to the whole on-site server maintenance hassle. There is no capital being spent on acquiring hardware and no maintaining of that hardware. You simply provision exactly what you need and use it accordingly. A lot of workers now, especially after the pandemic, prefer to work from home. With so many remote workers and remote offices, organizations needed for a way for everybody to be able to work regardless of where they were located. No time is wasted in provisioning when it comes to using the cloud. The time required to test, prepare, and provision servers eats away from the time that could have been spent pushing business incentives.
cloud architecture and global infrastructure. As a general overview, the cloud provides hardware and application services over the internet. Resources that you once had to buy for your hardware, like compute power, memory, storage, and graphical compute, are all provided as services. There is no cost for the acquiring of this hardware, nor is there any cost associated with the maintenance. You just provision what you need and you use it. These are the types of cloud services that you will encounter when dealing with cloud computing. The first one is software as a service, where you get the entire infrastructure, operating system, and the software provided by a third party. The second one is the platform as a service, where you get the entire infrastructure and operating system provided by a third party. And lastly, you have infrastructure as a service, where you get part of or all of an infrastructure platform provided by a third party. There are three types of clouds. The first one is the public cloud. This is a cloud service provided by some service providers such as GCP or AWS, where you can pay as you go when using this type of cloud. Public clouds are easily scalable and very elastic. The second one is the private cloud. This is the cloud that you technically create yourself. That is to say that this is your on-premises cloud. You have complete control over customizability here and it's the most secure of all your options. However, it is really expensive to maintain and upkeep and it is not easily scalable nor elastic. The maintenance of this cloud falls entirely upon you and there may be latency issues down the line. Lastly, you have the hybrid cloud, which is a combination of both public and private cloud. This is often found when companies are shifting from private to public cloud. Sometimes it's used as a backup option in case of emergency. AWS has a huge global presence, with its global architecture as you can see here. There are 24 AWS regions around the world and 64 availability zones, with more being added very fast. On the highest level, the physical infrastructure of AWS is comprised of multiple regions around the world, each region having numerous availability zones where the AWS data centers can be found. Availability zones are how you can make your applications highly available and fault tolerant. Multiple availability zones are found within a single region and are isolated from one another. They have a very low latency connection to each other, and each availability zone has one or more data centers within it. Your application will often be stored in multiple availability zones. Data centers are the actual meat and potatoes of the cloud. They are the physical servers that you will find within the availability zones. Again, an availability zone may have a number of these data centers or even just one depending on multiple factors. Parts of your application will be stored across these servers. Cloud Key Concepts Let's understand the key concepts of the cloud by understanding the basic requirements of a basic application to be set up on the AWS cloud and seeing what we would need to do in order to set it up. The first thing we're going to ensure is that we have the ability to connect our application on some domain name. For that, we're going to use AWS's Route 53 and Direct Connect. You don't need to worry about how exactly these services work right now. All you need to understand is that to make our application accessible via the internet, we're going to need these services. The second part of our application is the compute. The brains of our application will come from either Amazon EC2 or AWS Lambda. These are both compute services, the only difference being that Lambda is a serverless compute service and EC2 is not. Again, don't worry if you don't understand what that means because it'll all be made clear down the line. All you need to really understand is that this is the brains of our operation. Last comes storage. We need a place to store the data for our application. For storage, we can use a standard S3 bucket, or if we don't plan on accessing some things very frequently, we can even put those in an S3 glacier, kind of like cold storage if you would. With storage covered, we now have all the essentials we need to make our application, so let's now take a look at what our application would look like on the AWS cloud. This is what our complete application would look like when it's deployed on the AWS cloud. We would have networking, compute, and storage for our application all neatly wrapped up into a small private cloud. Benefits of AWS These are some of the major benefits of using the AWS cloud. Let's go through each of them together. The first one is flexibility. You can get AWS services according to your needs. AWS provides you with the virtual platform onto which you load the software services required to support your application. There, there's a number of ways that you can access AWS services and features. The first one is the AWS console that allows you to interact with the services via a graphical interface online. 
The second one is via programmatic access and CLI. This is going to be used to ensure that your applications are properly configured to work with AWS. Cost savings. You only pay for what you use with no worries of long-term contracts or upfront payments. Discounts are also available on certain resources for certain usages with AWS. One of the major benefits of cloud computing is that you can accommodate your needs exactly and in near real time. If you need more resources, you will always be given it. And if you feel you have too many resources and are paying for something you don't need, you can shrink your resources just as easily. You don't have to worry about the servers going down and your application losing crucial parts of itself and basically going out of commission. AWS is extremely fault tolerant and will keep your applications functional even in the event of some breakdown. Furthermore, AWS provides you with the high availability, meaning your application will be in an operational state for a significantly long amount of time and even through maintenance and system failure events. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at what you can do inside the free tier when it comes to AWS and what your offerings are for the free tier. Now, if you Google AWS free tier, the first page you're going to get is going to come to here. It's going to bring you to this page. And on this page, it's going to show you exactly what you can do on the free tier. Now, a lot of really important information is told you right off the bat is that on the free trial, it is a short term free trial that offers you a start from the date that you activate a particular service and it is 12 months free. So you can enjoy all of these free chair items for up to 12 months or up to a certain amount of hours or gigabits of gigabytes of usage. We're going to look at that in a bit more detail in just a few seconds. And of course, uh, these things are always going to be free. And this is described here in always free that these free chair offers do not expire in our and are available to all of our AWS customers and anybody who comes can use it. So how much do you actually get within the free tier? So if you scroll down on this page, you can see that you can get a lot of these uh, details on what you have for each free tier. Say, for example, we talk about the EC2, which is the, the basic compute that we will actually be looking at and we will set this up on the free tier later in this course. But we will see that you get 750 hours of free usage on Amazon EC2. And you can see what that actually the specifics of that are. So 750 hours per month of Linux, RGL or SLES, T2 micro or T3 micro instances. And that's dependent on the region or 750 hours per month of Windows T2 micro or T3 micro instance, of course, again, dependent on the region. And uh, honestly, there's a bunch more things that you can see. So say, for example, you want to teach or train yourself on a certain service and you didn't want to spend any money to, you know, learn that service and get something set up, then you can actually just search that service up right here. You can search on the free tier products or if, if you know the general category that service falls in, say, for example, we wanted to take a look at Lambda. Then if uh, I search for Lambda here, then, yeah, it shows you that you can do a million requests a month on Lambda. So it means that I can actually teach myself Lambda and set it up for free. And that's generally how you can take a look at what you can do in the free tier and just what is available to you. And we're going to be doing a lot of things in this course. And a lot of that is going to be on the free tier. So you don't really need to worry about spending any credits or money on doing any of the things that we're going to be doing in this course. It's all doable within the free tier. So yeah, that's just a small tour on the free tier. And Let's get started.